Hey YouTube fans, people of the interwebs, it's me, Sam of SG1, back for uh, another Star Trek Official Starships Collection review. That's quite a mouthful. Star Trek, the Official Starships Collection. Yeah, that's uh, not an easy sentence to say. Um, but yeah, as per the title page, I'm going to be doing issue number 8, the USS Excelsior. It's a lowly image on the front there, but there's a glaring spelling mistake on the front of the cover. You know, Eagle Moss, really? Come on. Um, but yeah, as, as, as always, you get the magazine and you get the, the ship itself. But onto that in a moment. Oh, I've destroyed it. Um, I'll get another thing as well. The first few um, ships were fine, but the, the since, I think Voyager, the stands have not really sat in the bases very well. I'm getting a little bit tired of that. Um, the first few were all right. I've never even mentioned it. But yeah, the the, the later ones, the um, the warts stay in, the warts stay plugged in very well. Um, that's better than most, but anyway. Um, but uh, you know, if you've got some clear nail varnish, just 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 almost dry rub it, you know, with clear nail varnish over the offending area, let it dry, and then plug it back in, and it should be tight as a whistle, tight as a whistle. Uh, whatever that expression is. Anyway, on to the magazine again, Excelsior. Um, specification register number is NCC 2000. Excelsior class. Now you'll notice from the title page it says Star Trek 6 um, because the NCC 2000 is from Star Trek 6. NX2000 is from Star Trek 3, um, because there are some differences, I'll get to those in a moment. Um, uh, constructed San Francisco Fleet Yards above the Earth, launch 2290, length 467 metres, 32 decks, crew of 500, top speed warp 9, weaponry type 8 phaser arrays, 3 photon torpedo launchers, captain's um, styles, NX2000 from Star Trek 3, and um, when it was NCC 2000, a Karusulu. Um, and we get the history of the Excelsior. We get a lovely CG shot there of the ship. But with no register number. We should have there. Should have had it there. But it's very, very, very nice. I love these CG renders. They are very cool indeed. Um, then we get the sort of again the brief history of um, the Excelsior. There's Captain Styles himself. The different bridge. That's Miguel uh, Faroa from Robocop. Um, as the Excelsior's first officer. You can see it's more of an original series style bridge, but they've got split consoles coming up, which is pretty cool. Then we've got the um, more famous from Star Trek 6 with Captain Sulu. Um, we've dubbed the Great Experiment, however, the. the uh, I lost it. Yeah, it was dubbed. The Excelsior class was dubbed the Great Experiment back here uh, because it was. Um, Starfleet's first experimental transwarp drive, however, it failed. Um, people thought Mr. Scott had, had uh, because he removed several um, isolinear chips from the system to prevent it from going to um, to prevent it from going to transwarp. However, um, it wasn't Scotty's fault at all. It was just a failure. So it was it was fitted with a standard warp drive and. Um, Continued to be in service well into the 25th century, so it's uh, 25th century Star Trek Online, you can still get them on there. Uh, formidable ship, um, again more sort of, you know, it's um, Star Trek 6 again, and then we see, uh, where are we, here, this picture again, of the Klingon, Imperial Klingon cruiser Kelrick, which is Kang's ship, in the Azure Nebula, um, which is the episode Flashback, which was Voyager's 30th anniversary episode, um, sort of fills in the gaps a little bit of Star Trek VI, from the explosion of Praxis to the attempted rescue of Captain Kirk and Dr. McCoy from the Repente. Oh, and I love these. Now, this is how you do a tech spec. Look, you've got all angles of the ship there. Very nice indeed. Love that, love that, love that. I think it's a beautiful ship. I think it's a really nice looking ship. Um, longer than Nebula class and again coming to my favourite section of the book um, Design of the Excelsior and in here we can see various uh, 
study models there of what it possibly could look like and then you've got um, sort of sketches so pre-designed sketches um, <clears throat> and then you've got some you know case study models there you can see elements of the Excelsior in there um, and you can see it all coming together quite nicely um, yeah these are just built to see what it could look like any design elements, got my eyes watering, do apologise See any design elements that people like, and then they're all sort of thrown into a pot. And as you can see here, it's it's coming. You know, it's not quite there yet. There's a few different versions of it, but it's coming. You know, you can see it sort of forming into shape, which is pretty cool. I do like these. I do like these a lot. And then we've got filming the Excelsior model. Um, of course, from Star Trek Three, it was used in Star Trek Four. Um, not very much in Star Trek 4, you just see it sort of, because Sulu says, um, when they're going back to the ship, McCoy says the line of, if there's one constant in the universe, it's bureaucracy, we'll get a freighter. And um, Sulu says, no, I'm, I'm counting on Excelsior. And Scotty says, what, that bucket of bolts? Anyway, the, the camera, you see the Excelsior sort of in the foreground, because the camera follows the shuttle pod as it bears around and you see the Excelsior, and then... It sort of peels away to reveal the Enterprise, 1701A. It's a beautiful shot, actually. And then it was used in um, Next Generation, and it masqueraded as the Hood, um, the Melbourne, the Crazy Horse, uh, a few others. Basically just stock footage of it flying past the ship. And then it was repurposed for Star Trek um, Generations as the Enterprise B. And then it was repurposed again in... Um, Deep Space Nine's episode Homefront, in which it was named the Lakota, which is there, um, which was renamed the Lakota, and that was the last time they used the actual physical model. Every other subsequent appearance of the Excelsior was a CG shot. Um, and the movie appearances, it was in the first appearance, Star Trek Theater Search for Spock, and then it was in Star Trek. Three, four, five, and six. Five stock footage from Star Trek Four, uh, and it was of course seen on uh, the USS Excelsior, seen on Star Trek Voyager, designed by Bill George, Nilo Brodis, Jamera. I'm saying that right. David Car Carson, uh, and the key here in Star Trek Three and Star Trek Six, and in Star Trek Six: The Discovery of Country, we have a brief cameo by Christian Slater, who wakes up Sulu. Sort of halfway through the film and says, Oh, we don't know where Enterprise is, you know. Command saying, you know, where is it? And Sulu was like, Well, I don't know. Um and of course he, he's lying, you know, of loyalty to the crew and everything. And next issue is the Defiant. Oh yeah. So, that's the magazine done. And you get the beautiful sort of shot there. They keep switching these up, some of them that way and some of them that way. I wish they'd keep them consistent, but you know. That says maybe. So, onto the model itself, and here we go. This is pretty nice. I do like it, but then again, I've always been a fan of the Excelsior class. Anyway, um, like I said, the, um, it's a really nice design. It's a really nice design model as well. It's got some nice paint apps. Some details are missing, some are present. Um, but generally though, I think that in the cell is just a little bit wonky, but that's just the way it was packaged, that's not, not too bad. But it's, it's, it's a nice ship, it's a nice looking model, I like it a lot. Um, now one thing I'd wish they'd done is put the blue um, in underneath the saucer there, you can see the little ridge there. If you put the blue in, the, in there it'd look nice, but you know, I don't mind, I don't mind it. Um, yeah, it's missing several details on the nacelles there. You can see that they've been moulded in there but not been painted. Um, these shouldn't be, you know, statically flat. They should have grooves sort of running down them. Um, but other than that, it's a really nice model. I like it a lot. I think it's a really nice version of it. I can't wait to see what the Enterprise B looks like. And I'm hoping we get the Lakota as well. Um... I mean, it'd be technically the same ship, but you know, just have a, a variant of the name would be nice. Um, but yeah, this is this is pretty fucking cool. Now, the original Excelsior, the NX two zero 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 two zero zero zero. There we are. Um, the bridge module was different, and the there was a big um, 
crystal at the back there, the impulse crystal, but there's two on this one. Um, and I think the shuttle bear was a little bit different as well. But yeah, I think it's a really good model. Um, nitpicks for this particular model. Number one, you can obviously see where they've, they've glued the plastic in there, which is a bit of a shame. The, these um, fins, one is bigger than the other, but it's just a minor thing. And the, the forgetting the, the blue thing there, and just missing various paint apps here, there, and everywhere. But other than that, I like it. I keep, I keep repeating myself. Um, it is on straight. A few people have noticed that theirs haven't been on straight. But yeah, I think this is a really nice looking model. One of the better ones, it's, although it's still not the best, one of the better ones, um, but yeah, I mean, Excelsior is one of those ships that it, it's, it, it divides the fandom. Most people like it, there's a lot of people that don't like it, but I really like the Excelsior class. I think it's a lovely looking ship, and you get some real nice angles like that. So, yeah, I like it. Anyway, it comes with a stand. Again, it comes with a loose stand, um, I'll, I'll, I'll say. Um, your standard black stand and your standard clear plastic bit that connects to it. Um, but, but yeah, mine won't sit in very well and it's a bit of a shame. But on the bottom, again, as always, you get USS Excelsior NCC2000. And it fits on the stand like so. It's a normal stand like that and what you do is you push it through like that as far as it'll go and then you connect it to the saucer and it stays fairly snugly actually but I just wish the base was a bit more snugly and it sits on the base like so which is not bad which is not bad at all I like it so that's me that's the Excelsior you can't see me because I'm just positioning my ships again I'm sorry that's me that's the Excelsior and I will see you all in the Alpha Quadrant. Bye for now.